Okay, so in this presentation, we're going to go over some of the basic features on a category of plants known as gymnosperms. And like the picture shows, these are plants that have leaves that are needle-like, and they reproduce by creating cones, like pine cones. So let's go ahead and get started. So one of the major advancements with gymnosperms is they make seeds. Gymnosperms are a little different than the other videos I've made on ferns and mosses. Ferns and mosses do not make seeds, but gymnosperms do. And one of the advantages of seeds, it says seed, seed plants, plants that have seeds, they don't depend on water to reproduce. Moss and ferns do. Moss and ferns need water in order for swimming sperm cells to swim from the, the male, what's called the anthridium, to the female archegonium. But with seed plants, often they spread their pollen by either wind or by pollinating animals. Another advantage of having seeds is that a seed itself is, uh, is full of nutrients. And so inside of the seed, there's a little baby embryo. There's an embryo of a plant with a little stored food supply that it will feed on until the seed cracks open and the little tiny embryonic leaf begins to do photosynthesis. Of course, we know that seeds are often very, very hard, and we actually have, you know, nutcrackers and stuff to try to break open seeds. And so seeds offer protection. They protect the embryo that's growing inside. And until the embryo gets to be a certain size where it will break open from the seed and begin to grow on its own. But so that's a couple of advantages right there of having seeds. Another advantage of seeds is that seeds are often designed to be dispersed, to be spread. And so, uh, like the picture shows, we have birds. Birds will often eat fruits, and of course, buried inside of the fruit is a seed. And so the bird will eat the fruit and then fly away, and then a few hours later, the bird goes to the bathroom and takes a poop, and the seeds are carried from, the, uh, from where the bird first ate the seeds until where the bird traveled, and, and the, the seeds are then left in the bird poop. And so this is one great little adaptation that plants have to being dispersed. Plants, again, they, they would have a big disadvantage if they just fell straight down on the ground and landed underneath their parent tree. The parent tree would block all the sunlight, and rob all the nutrients. So seeds need help help the plant be dispersed. Another way that seeds help being dispersed is they often are, can, can drift in the wind. If you've ever had dandelion seeds, a uh, dandelion like you see in the picture, and you just pluck a dandelion and, and blow on the, the fuzzy little white seeds, they'll blow away in the wind and eventually land somewhere and grow into more dandelions. And some seeds, you'll see this a little bit later, even have little wings on them. These are called helicopter seeds. Now, they're not helicopters like man-made helicopters. They don't have a motor. They don't, uh, they don't uh, use energy to rotate. But when they fall, when the seed falls from the tree, a little gust of wind can cause them to twirl around and they kind of glide and then they land, I don't know, maybe a hundred feet away from the parent tree. We'll see more on this in a little bit. So uh, I already talked about in other videos, group one were seedless and non-vascular plants, and we focused on moss. Group two were seedless, but they had a vascular system, and we focused on ferns. So today we're going to focus on a type of plants that's, in, that's called gymnosperms. And gymnosperms are what we call are, are plants that produce seeds, and they have a vascular system. And so gymnosperms is the big, broad name for these types of plants. Now, there's another group of plants we'll see in another video called angiosperms, but this video is really going to focus on gymnosperms. And so one of the defining features, and you saw this on the title picture at the beginning, is that the leaves of gymnosperms are often very needle-like. It helps reduce their water loss. A lot of them live in very cold places where water is kind of scarce, and so having real thin leaves like this prevents them from losing a lot of water. And gymnosperms are very common in the lumber industry. So a lot of the wood products that we use in building uh, building supplies comes from from gymnosperms. You can go down to a home supply shop like Home Depot 
and you can go to the lumber section and, and you can buy various kinds of lumber such as spruce. Uh, spruce is a gymnosperm and you can go down to a lumber yard and buy spruce. And when the plant is reproducing, you may have often noticed that trees like pine, pine trees produce cones. Well, there's actually two different kinds of cones. And so there are some cones that produce pollen. These are the male cones. There are some cones that produce eggs. These are the female cones. And in the picture, the picture on top shows a male cone. The picture on the bottom shows a female cone. And so we're going to go over how they reproduce and how we'll talk more about cones in a few moments. But here's just a nice picture of a male and female cone, a pollen cone for the male and a seed, uh, excuse me, a, uh, yeah, a seed cone, a seed cone for the female. And so you can see in this picture, somebody's shaken a, a, a cone and little seeds are falling out. And so cones will protect the seeds that are growing inside. And so when a sperm and egg fuse together, they make a zygote. That zygote will eventually harden into a seed. And the seed is protected inside by the cone. And so here are some examples. Evergreen, pine, redwood, cedar. These are examples of gymnosperms. One thing I want to mention really quick is that gymnosperms can be subdivided into three basic or three, uh, three a little more specific categories. The picture here shows one of those categories called a cycad. And notice how the cone structure is right in the middle. You know, we're not really going to focus too much on these. A second group of gymnosperms, ginkgo. You might, you might know of ginkgo because it's, it's an herbal supplement that some people take to help improve their memory. And, and so ginkgo is another of the gymnosperms, uh, but we're really not going to focus on them either in this video. Here's the one that we're going to pay most of our attention to, conifers. Conifers are, for instance, like pine trees. Pine trees are a great example of conifers. And so these are the ones we're going to focus our attention on. Uh, and when we go over the life cycle of how gymnosperms reproduce, it's really conifers that we're examining. So here again, here are the three big broad categories, the three, I should say, subcategories of gymnosperms, the cycads, ginkgo, and conifers. Like I said, though, the one we're stressing, if you're in my biology class, the one I want you to, uh, to pay extra special attention to are the conifers. Okay, so let's go over the, the reproductive life cycle. You know that plants in general go through a cycle of what's called alternation of generations. And let's kind of show you how that happens in gymnosperms. So here's a, a common gymnosperm right here. And the note says, number one, the adult sporophyte grows in a forest. So again, in gymnosperms, the sporophyte is the dominant stage. If you come across a redwood tree, what you're looking at is a, the sporophyte stage. If you come across a pine tree, what you're looking at is the sporophyte stage. So let's, let's say that this is a pine tree and, and it's growing in the forest. What we're looking at is the adult sporophyte. Well, because it's an adult, it has male and female cones on it. Male pollen cones tend to be clustered in, in groups and, and they tend to be smaller and female seed cones tend to be a bit larger. Let's zoom on in. Here's a closer look at, the, at male pollen cones. And so when you see what I meant by they tend to be, uh, the male pollen cones tend to be clustered together. So there's about a, you know, a couple dozen in that picture right there, all clustered together. When we look at a zoomed in picture of a female, female seed cones, you can see that there's a couple of them, two or three or four of them grouped together. But uh, these are scattered throughout the tree. I, I'm, I'm only showing one group of male pollen cones and one group of female seed cones, but there are multiple uh, patches of male pollen cones on the tree, multiple patches of female seed cones. So here's how it's going to work next. So next we're going to show you that the male pollen cone 
The reason it's called a pollen cone is it's going to release pollen, and pollen is the male gametophyte. Remember, plants alternate between sporophyte and gametophyte stage, and so here we see pollen is the name of the haploid stage, the gametophyte stage. And in the animation, you see little black dots are being released, so on a nice windy day, wind will carry pollen. And sometimes they will pollinate themselves. In this animation, we're going to have this tree pollinate a neighbor. So let's find a neighboring tree. Here we go. Let's move to the right and find a neighboring tree. Okay, here we have a neighboring tree, and the neighboring tree just received some pollen from the tree that we saw to the left. And that's what pollination is. Pollination is where pollen from one is transported to another. And so the pollen lands on a female seed cone. Well, let's go ahead and zoom on into the seed cone so we can get a closer look at what's going on. Let's zoom on in right now. And when we zoom on in, we can see that there are little there are little wedges in between the seed cone. These little crevices, these little wedges are called scales. And inside of every scale, inside of every little wedge there, is the female gametophyte. So if you notice, there's one female gametophyte, there's another and another and another. So a single cone might hold a dozen, a couple dozen female gametophytes. Every one of them might be pollinated. So watch. In pollination, in pollination, here we see pollen, a whole bunch of pollen land. Each little individual scale there received a pollen grain. And so if you have 12 pollens land on 12 female gametophytes, chances are you're eventually going to get 12 seeds. But let's zoom on into one single female gametophyte. See that flashing yellow box? Let's zoom on in there and take a closer look. And when we do, here's what we see. One individual scale, and we see that the black outlines what is known as the female ovule. And the ovule is simply the outer boundary of the female gametophyte. And so what happens during the process of pollination, there is a big old green pollen grain. And so there is a pollen, and it just landed, and the black dot in the middle of the pollen, that's a sperm cell. And so we're setting up, I hope you see what we're setting up. We're setting up the process of fertilization. And so now let's look at fertilization. Sperm is going to travel from that greenish, that green uh, pollen grain. Watch the animation. So that black dot sperm is going to travel into the egg where a zygote will be created. And so once the zygote is created, notice how there's a thick black line outlining the outside of what is called the ovule. And that is going to grow into a seed. So the, uh, that will protect the zygote that's growing inside. If we zoom back out and take a look at that cone, when we zoom back out and take a look at the cone, you can see, hey, look at that. There's a seed in every little wedge. And so one single cone very well can house multiple, multiple seeds. Well, let's zoom out again. Let's zoom out again and take a look at the overall tree. And so here's a female seed cone. And so we just saw pollen come on in and fertilize. And so now what? Well, on a nice windy day, earlier in the notes I told you that seeds are often called helicopter seeds. So on a nice windy day, now that the seeds have formed, the cone is going to open, and one by one, the seeds are going to begin to fall from the seed cone. Watch the animation. And because they have those little helicopter wings on them, they simply spin away and drift and blow in the wind. And eventually, they're going to land on the ground and hopefully grow into a new tree. Let's follow those. So here comes a helicopter seed, and it just landed on the ground. Well, this little helicopter seed is going to hopefully grow if conditions are right, if it lands in a nice, nice area with lots of sunlight and good moisture and plenty of water. 
that little seed is going to grow into a little young sporophyte. And over the years, it, of course, it'll get bigger. Over the years, that little young sporophyte will grow into a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually become an adult, uh, an adult sporophyte. And notice how there are now cones on this adult sporophyte. Some of the cones are male pollen cones, some of the cones are female seed cones, and therefore we restart the cycle. The male pollen cone will release pollen and restart this whole cycle. Okay, so there you have it. There's a quick overview of a category of plants called gymnosperms. Gymnosperms, if you recall, are seed producing and have a vascular system. So go ahead and if you're in my biology class, pause the video, try to answer these questions. Bring your answers to me on a separate sheet of paper. I'd be happy to check them for accuracy. Good luck.